incoming. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's the last weekend of what's considered summer season at Cedar Point. It's the day before Halloween weekend kicked off, which the cool thing about this is means that everything Halloween weekends should be set up and out there. So what we're doing today is not only catching a few rides, but we're gonna go through and do a whole Halloween weekend walkthrough, show you guys where the houses are at, the decorations, all that fun stuff. These really cool decorations behind us. <laughs> oh yes. It's kind of fun because on when as I'm filming this, I'm seeing the reflection of one of the pumpkins literally <laughs> right in there. That's kind of cool. We're getting invaded because everybody's here. <laughs> so we're gonna head out in. We get some ride time. And we'll keep it going. Let's have fun. Jazzy. Jazzy, look, what? look, they're dying to get in. There's like zombies in there. Yep. Well, like I said, out of the gate, we were going to tell you about some of the uh, Halloween stops and the locations and whatnot. Here's one right out of the gate. It's Zombie High, Zombie Junior High during the day, Zombie High at night. But it's right out of the gate as we again get another epic look at that coaster. This one's pretty cool because it's open during the daytime for people to kind of test out if they want to do houses or whatnot. Pretty cool one for teens to do like this team, which hopefully we'll get back to do. But out of the gate, there's your first one and it comes right as you walk in. It is a ridiculously gorgeous day right now. It is Sunday morning. It is around a little after 10 o'clock. We're here for the early opening. So we're trying to head back a little bit towards the back of the park and uh, see what we got around here shall we as you guys can see the graveyard scenes are already set up it is looking fantastic here we are actually headed over towards gatekeeper cuz it's early riding and that's what we like to do the gatekeeper shop because Laura and Jazzy hopped on because it's one of the early entry rides going on and they got some pretty cool shirts going on here this one I really really like because it's got a nice blue tone to it it is $26.99 uh, they mark this one down to $24.99 must be like an older version there's a pretty cool black one there they got some nice little Cedar Point shot glasses. These rank $5.99. So those are cool. Oh, Evan finds a snow globe. Whoa. Oh, Cedar Point. Whoa. That is so cool. I didn't even notice this. And it's got all the coasters along the bottom. And it is $25.99. Here's a really cool hooded sweatshirt. I like the look, the design of it. It is all $39.99. So that's cool. And we've got, oh, we've got some pins going. And these are the game pins. So they got a little interactive game that you can play on your phone, the Battle for Cedar Point. And that's what three of these are, are those. And then they've, of course, got the Battle for Cedar Point ones here. Some Gatekeeper bottle cap ones. Love this. I'm gonna have to show that to mommy. So you flip it over. Yeah. Oh, gatekeeper. Whoa. Let's see what else is around. They have these really cool Whoa. gatekeeper magnets, which we actually have the Val Raven magnet. Um, hey, these look. are $5.99. Um, so getting one of those. Ooh, a nice little wildcat magnet going back in time there. You can never go wrong with a Snoopy plush. The Snoopies are... Oh, Daddy, Snoopies are 
And then, oh, check this out. This is cool. It's a gatekeeper in an 8-bit style graphic. $14.99 kid shirt. That's a pretty cool kid, kid oh, shirt, too. Dark. Yep, and it glows in the dark. You can tell he's pretty happy. That one's also $19.99. We were just talking about the... As, Oh, train was coming in. We we're talking about the game, the battle for Cedar Point, and this is one of the placards that you actually scan or can shoot, and you want to play in the game. There's some info on it. Evan Big Head. As Evan Big Head gets in the way. Download for free Battle for Cedar Point app. Watch this. This graphic. Graphic in Kung Kung. Kung. Augmented. Come, come to life in a augmented reality game. Good job. Alright, house two on the tour is Hex. This is one of the more, I guess, thrill-seeking ones for the little one because it says spooky fun haunts for young scare seekers. This one's pretty cool. The Witch of Hex has toned down their spells and a magical daytime haunt for beginners. So this is all for the beginners, but this one is just outside of the exit to Gatekeeper over here. So pretty cool one. As you can see, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday 11 to 4, Sunday 11 to 2. I think after we're later on, I'm not sure. I'd have to look. But I think later they actually turn it into a more scarier one at night. I'm not sure offhand, but I do believe this is going to be a either a stage show or a meet and greet of some kind over here. This is in front of the giant wheel that is across from the bumper cars and just to the left of Gatekeeper. That's a pretty cool setup. I really like how that looks. Um, zoom in on it nice and good. We love Halloween. Right? And then, of course, they've got the skeletons out. This first skeleton is probably an NFL ref from a New England Patriots game. And then the rest of these ones. These are pretty cool. I love how they're really animated. This one, thinking he's a strong man. This? There's the actual NFL player. Yeah. This is what Baker Mayfield looks like before he gets sacked. You know, I know the part can be really, really fun, but you don't have to lose your head over it. All right, so just off to the left of the giant wheel where you see Wicked Twister in the background, this is going to be one of the kids' areas um, here. This is where you've got hay mazes and giant spider web nets and a lot of cool stuff that the kids will be able to do. Really like how this looks and how they're really going out all out for the kids. Of course, they put up cool signs like this area guarded by the spirits of Halloween. weekend. Don't enter just yet. <laughs> Here's one of the peanut setups and it looks like there could be a few different things that might be like a photo op uh, opportunity in through there or there might even be like a small house or something that comes through there but i really like the setup how everything and snoopy and woodstock are both mummies maybe they're looking for their daddies who knows so earlier in the year we saw this uh mosaic here or this banner of snoopy being in space and celebrating the Apollo, the missions that they did and everything. And we were trying to find it. It's right here in Planet Snoopy. Doi. That's in the front of the park. Well, I almost thought it would be back in Camp Snoopy, but what? that's okay. It looks cool as heck. Also, if you ever need it, I highly doubt it, but up in the front of the park here in Planet Snoopy, there's a first aid station right there, so if you ever need help or whatnot, and it leads into both the arcade over there, if I can get it in the shot, and the Snoopy Boutique. So stop three on the tour brings us to Erie Estates, and this is another one for the youngsters. Um, 
that's there. This is another cool one. Again, 11 to 4 on Saturdays. Sunday, 11 to 2. This one just to the right of Melt and just down from where Windseeker and everything is at. Another pretty cool little house to go to. And who else wouldn't want to come and get a lovable hug from, well, a statued beagle? I mean, come on, it's the worth of your day. <laughs> There's another good look at a different sign that'll point you towards the entrance over that way there. I just saw another squirrel! Well, yeah, there's theme park squirrels and pigeons and ravens. Now, something that is pretty cool is this is actually the entrance for the Fright Lane, and Fright Lane is basically the Fast Pass, Fast Pass Plus for the haunted houses for Halloween weekends. This one is a little bit more of a difficult one. It is a five. It is a five. This one here, um, yeah, probably get it back in the shot. This one here goes eight to midnight, six to midnight, and then three to eight on the weekends because this area state is a little bit more uh, hardcore. Yeah, a little bit more hardcore than the kids one that they do on the other side. What's that, Bubba? and everything have really come into bloom late here at the park and they look fantastic. This is an absolutely epic view. I love the corkscrew, I love the design, I love the fact that it goes over the walkways and everything. It is so cool. Next up on the list, it's the Boneyard Battleground here at Cedar Point, which point, props to Cedar Point for that logo. That logo is absolutely awesome. This. Can, can we say Mad Max? Right. That's basically almost what it's off of. This is actually very cool. This is one of their stage shows that they're doing, but it's also one of their scare grounds or scare zones. Now, obviously, they won't have anything going during the daytime, except for that. <laughs> well, okay, so let's say what this, this one thing that they're doing that they are introducing this year is uh, the no fright lights. Yeah. Yeah, which we're hoping to find today. I doubt that they'll be out today, but we're gonna see if they are, just to get one ahead of time. So when we come back, Evan will already be set and have one. But the theming that they've done in this place, in this scare zone, is absolutely amazing right now. Now this is the same area that Monster Jam was set up in. So it's just outside of the Iron Dragon and usually where they did the summertime stage show, they've already converted it over to the uh, Boneyard stage show that you're gonna see. This is incredible. I mean, I'm loving how like rusted out these containers are, the way the cages are set, how that truck the truck has the deflated tires and everything. Looking so cool. That kind of reminds me. Whoa. There's a look at the sign for the Boneyard Battleground. Of course, live entertainment. Uh, it goes Friday and Saturday night, 7 p.m. to midnight on it. And they've got stuff just everywhere. I mean, look at the containers how they got the top of the containers cut out and whatnot. And then here is a look at the stage for the Boneyard Battleground, and this looks incredible. I love the throne of uh, skeletons there. You can see where people can pop out of up top. This is just, just an amazing setup that Cedar Point did on this one. Great job, guys. Not a surprise.
beautiful sound than a roller coaster in a half quiet park right now? Not really. Penny machine. Man, I just can't talk all of a sudden. <laughs> in recent years, and they don't have them out just yet, it looks like, but in recent years, they've had a big goblin sitting in the middle of a chair here in, the, uh, in this building. They don't right now, but that's probably because he's just not out yet. They still got a week to finalize everything. Another one of the always cool props that they have here at the point is this hearse that they decorate all out. It's very cool. Of course, it is coming. It starts next weekend. Six indoor mazes, six outdoor scare zones, the Boneyard Battleground, which, like I said, is an absolutely cool, cool logo. And of course, if you get your gold pass now, or if you renew your platinum, like we're gonna be doing very soon, you get in for the rest of the year for free. So next up on the hollow weekend walkthrough that we got going on is Happily Never After that's happening here at the Red Garter Saloon. Another indoor uh, show that they're doing. And there you see the time for it, six, seven, eight, and nine on Saturday. Sundays, four, five, six, and seven. And of course, there's always light on or just keep calm and carry on. Next up on the Halloween walk through is you get the Trail of the Forsaken. It is back for year number two. And this, of course, another scare zone. This is usually lit up, not really lit up, but this is fog through because they have a lot of scare actors that will sit in here or just outside. Like you've got your jump scare netting over here where you'll get a guy that'll bungee off, scare somebody, and then jump back into there. And then of course, you have the most scariest thing of all. Yeah, a horse. So something we didn't know about that we just found, there is a selfie station right here that's inside of Frontier Town. It's just to the right of all the buildings and the fort and just to the left of where you come in at. But this is a cool little selfie station, and because it's fun pics, we can put it in now. This is the other entrance to the Forbidden, uh, excuse me, the Trail of the Forsaken, or the Trail of the Forsaken. This is the other entrance that comes from the uh, Maverick going back this way. It's just outside of the barnyard and that is where our next house is at so it's closed off right now so it's closed off right now but here is the next stop on the tour and that is slaughterhouse uh this one is one of the better ones of everything and you can kind of get if i can get this to look right you can get kind of a look see at some of the pumpkins and whatnot that are back in through there. This one, of course, is a Fright Lane style. 
I do like how the truck and everything gets set up. Um, this is one of the ones that have been here for a while now. And this one again, just outside of the trail of the Forsaken and right across from Forbidden Frontier. Next up on our list is an updated one that they have had for years, but they've updated it. It's Corn Stalkers 2.0 Revenge of the Pumpkinhead. This is the one that they that goes through Thunder Canyon. They drain out Thunder Canyon so you can actually walk through the maze itself. I mean, as you can see, all the corn stalks are already technically in place. So you kind of get an idea of what you're getting set to go through. This is actually another cool maze that is for the big kids or if you really like to be scared has a very high scare factor in this yes. one uh actually has a four uh for the scare factor although i think that might be thunder canyons yeah, thunder canyons, yeah. okay this one was at a five if i saw it yeah. online yesterday yeah this one this one will be at a five but it's a very cool one uh and i like how they've redone the logo on it it looks pretty cool so we're out in the back of the park now, back by Maverick and all the games that are usually here are set up again, like they are every year. The Harvest Fear, that they call it. So you got the Racco Rats, and you got the Singing Beaver, which right now is just a big clumpy hair. Me <laughs> too! You got the gazebo, the peep show, kisses. Drinks and everything. You even have a dunk tank over there. So that's pretty cool. I will say one thing as it had looked like we were about to get buzzed by a coaster. I will say one thing that, give me a sec. I will say one thing that's been pretty weird and I need to expand, well, I don't think it's. Okay, so I will say this one thing about Cedar Point right now, which is kind of weird. There hasn't been a lot of copyright music being played today, which is actually pretty cool because it makes me, it gives me an opportunity to show you guys more of the park um, than what we normally would be able to because of a lot of copyright music. Right now it's going pretty good. Like I said, we're in the back of the park. We are actually headed to get something to eat real quick. Uh, and then we're going to do a few other things. All right, so we decided to go with a little light snack here. We got ourselves a pretzel. At least Evan got a pretzel. How's it taste, Bubba? Tastes pretty good? Yeah. Yeah? It's like one from the baseball games. Oh. How about that cheese? Cheese is pretty good, yeah. Fries are super good and you get a huge amount of it. Not bad, we did get our season pass discount on it, which was 10% off, but still wasn't bad. Uh, the amount of food that you get with the drink, we paid 20 bucks. It's not bad, it's all really, really good and uh, I need to get a part of this. And so this I have to put this camera down. And, and, and this will tide us over until we leave the park and we actually stop and get food. Yep. Next up on the tour, it's the Tombstone Territory here back by Maverick and Steel Vengeance. Dude, feed your horse. That's the reason why you come here. That's why everybody, as I'd rather They seem to have a thing for the dead horses around here. I love the theming in every single area. This being an old west style area that there is. That's actually new. They put a wanted dead or alive selfie spot. Nice. And there's a good look at that wanted dead or alive thing there. Evan pointing out that there's an exit written on that barrel there. If you're ever in the back of the park and you run into a spot where you need first aid at, it is over here. It's next to the smokehouse. 
and they're excellent. Uh, yep. A couple years ago, we were here with uh, Jocelyn's school. She had some issues. They brought her over here. They were able to help us transport us back to our car and got us on our way home. So, yeah. thankfully, she was okay, but still. Yep, and that's right off to the right of the <laughs> smokehouse and the saloon. And it winds up bringing us to our next spot. That next spot being Cutthroat Cove, the pirate Halloween weekend attraction that they've got here. And you can kind of get an idea, to get a little closer on this. This is where your entrance to Cutthroat Cove is, and the music is really loud coming off of that thing. But here's your entrance to it right off to the side here you get a good look at the ship they typically will have an actor or two up there looking pretty pretty cool it was awesome <laughs> okay so there is nothing better than getting a ride on what they call here linus's beetle bugs tilt a whirl but it's a tilt a whirl and there's nothing better all it's, four of us <laughs> i was saying that's the cool thing is that all four of us were able to get on the ride and do it, and we got those cars a spinning. Yes, we did. Holy moly. Hey, look. That was great. We're headed up towards our next look at for how weekends. Yeah. You know, you never realize how tall this thing actually is until you're dead underneath it. Even this camera doesn't even make it look like it's that tall, but going up. coming down. This right here is where you'll come out for Blood on the Bayou. Pretty cool ride. All right, so right here in front of Power Tower is where the Blood on the Bayou entrance is. This is another one of those walkthrough style uh, outdoor uh, haunts that they do. It's actually pretty cool. A lot of fog, a lot of jump scares in it. Uh, really, really like it. Especially the theming that they've got here. It's pretty cool. Into the future! Into the future us! <laughs> um, so there is a few things that we did wind up missing in this we, that we goofed no, on. We, we missed the haunted house on Boo Hill that's next to Blue Street. Yeah, I can't believe we forgot the house on Boo Hill. I cannot believe that's a, that's a staple. Like, I can't believe that happened. <laughs> and then we didn't show off the freak show, which we've showed off last year and the year before. Which so, is, is, for those who don't know, the freak show is at back by the Italian Swings near the uh, exit for Maverick. Um, and yeah, that one is a definite five. Yeah, there's always a long line to get into that one. That's the most popular one. Oh, and by the way, I'm rocking the uh, the shirt that I got this time around. The uh, awesome fit. I love it. It's comfortable and it's working perfectly for these 90 degree days. All of a sudden, we got second summer. <laughs> so what happens when you live in Michigan? You know, you get the second summer. But there's still a lot of cool stuff. The um, uh, the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown area that they're basically calling it. There is a lot of new things that have just come up on the site because, of course, tonight, it's Friday when we're doing it's this. Yeah, it's, it's actually right so, now, it's Friday the 13th. So which is tonight is when it opens. They put out a lot of stuff uh, about the kids area that we didn't know at the time when we shot it. We do now. There's tractor races. There's a... Uh, a Foam pit, that Linus thing that we went by, is actually going to have foam coming out of those holes. Oh my god. For the mummy I'm thing. Our, I'm not going to get Evan so out of that's, there. So that's almost like a foam pit. There's a corn pit. There's a, they call it the Snoopy spider maze. There's a few different hay bale mazes after a certain, you <laughs> know, not going to get Evan out of there. This, honestly, with the amount of stuff that we had to cover there, it probably should have been like a two-day vlog. Yeah. <laughs> It really should have, but uh, we do plan on going back for um, for at least some of that stuff uh, probably here within the next couple of weeks. So it's just a matter of timing. 
work yep. wise. So Yep, gotta make I it there one more could, time. I wish we can do it this weekend, but we're unfortunately we're busy, so Well it's not only that, but not only is it opening weekend, but there's also a thing called Point Fest going on Saturday. Yeah, which And if you've ever gone no, during that time <laughs> we we love it. you, Cedar Point. We, we love you from the bottom time. of our heart. We did it one time. Never again. <laughs> we love you, Cedar Point. We love you from the bottom of our hearts. But you invite some crazy people when Point Fest comes in. <laughs> Which, it's not horrible, but I mean, it just, it gets to be a lot. And rides like when Gemini turns into 30 to 45 minutes waiting because of everybody and their mother being there it tends to get a little bit long so yep but we're done thank you guys for watching make sure that you like share and subscribe if you have not because you've made it this far why not and then um also we're going to put a link uh on uh, our youtube below um we now have something that's called friends of havoc 2k17 productions on facebook so yep. Um, we're wanting to uh, show support to our friends and our uh, the people that you know do their extra vlogging, uh, extra um, radio shows. Uh, I know uh, Todd Gilbert's got one that he's been doing um, that he does all his favorite music. He also focuses on local talent. Um, I know that uh, I'm trying to think here, uh, Ray. And then, of course, yep. Jason does now Close to the Heart, which, you know, we love those guys to death, so we're definitely wanting to help them and have them help us and show our support. So. Right. And we've got some other guys that are on Twitter that we're going to put on there as well if they've got a Facebook page or whatnot. So, yeah, Cal. <laughs> yeah, Cal. Yeah, go with Cal as one. Definitely check him out. Uh, Super Enthusiast, another one. Check her out. She's really cool, too. We're done. We're done. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>